10 away with every opening you got compared to Fuzzy. So it's really going to be up on Rick to see if if he manages to maintain parity in neutral. Mm -hmm. if, that if he manages to also uh, maintain parity in the punish game. Yeah. So, but here we are. We're already in the game. 30 seconds in. Game on Yoshi. Yeah, almost 100 Yoshi. another SD, but Riggs unfortunately is Ooh, what a nice crouch cancel on the down tilt. Unfortunately, messing up the edge card though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he gets the edge cards going. Very nice wavelength to the platform to kind of create confusion for Rick as to where he should recover. Oh. Also, then being able to position well to like go to top lad if Rick chooses to recover very high. So, good stuff from Pipsqueak. And uh, one thing about Pipsqueak as a player, which you'll uh, notice very often, is that he likes to do light shield on the side blast every time the mm -hmm. opponent has an invisibility. Because it's yeah. such a commitment to kind of break Fox open when he's sitting there shielding on the side flat. But Absolutely, and then he can just get pushed off, and then he has a lot of different options he can mix to make it hard for the oh. opponent to chase him. So exactly. it's definitely a very good option. Very good way to mitigate the danger of the invincible fox. <laughs> yeah, invincible fox is scary. I'll give him that. It's scary. <laughs> he's already scary enough, but then he's invincible. So yeah. But right now, yeah. The... Ooh. Randall uh. messes up Rick's heavily right there, because that would have been mm. an easy edge guard situation for him. Mm. And I love that full hop as a reaction buffer. Rick's mm. being scared, spot dodging, and Pipsqueak with a slow fall full hop, immediately able to react and back air him out of the spot dodge. But what a steal by Rick to retaliate. Oh god, but that was such a good catch, and then the... The platform punish game is brutal from Pipsqueak, as we've seen before. Pipsqueak's edge guards have been near flawless this whole game. Yeah, it really has the slow chart down. Oh, oh god, that that would have hurt if you rigs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pipsqueak yeah, keeping right the middle, now. not making it easy for him to to get a. I was also going to mention, uh, as you said, holding center stage. We really just see. Rick's kind of forced to dance around neutral the entire time because Pipsqueak just has such a strong grasp on center stage. And the problem also about not having center is that once you lose neutral because you already have less options, you're already in mm. an even worse spot than maybe, you know, getting shine somewhere in center stage. Yeah. And compared with Pip's strong punish game, it really kind of flawlessly leads from transitions from like neutral into Edge guarding slash punish game, and that's kind of how Rick has uh, Pip pulled away with that one, that one game one. Absolutely. If there's anyone who's really good at making you pay for just like successfully landing a shine by the corner, it's Pip Squeak. He has so many good ways to to trap you and to catch you and to take your stocks really, really quickly. And uh, yeah, very good job by Pip Squeak to hold the hold the middle and close out the game comfortably. Rick goes to Dreamland. Yeah, I think that's completely fine because we saw he was kind of getting um, overwhelmed. It was, it, yeah, overwhelmed. That's the word. Where um, the space, the minimal space, he favored Pips a lot because he was just much more, I'd say, confident. Not even just comfortable, but confident in um, the Titan scramble situation. Here we go again. Pips week with the edge cards. Ah, oh, he oh, kind of yeah. flops his movement and. But he but gets far the DI in for Riggs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I wouldn't have even killed it DI properly. But DI Schmix is a DI Schmix. Oh, and again, the punish. See, the platform extensions are so brutal from Pipsqueak. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's again, really cool. Also, DI is straight in. <laughs> and now it's going to be interesting. Again, Riggs just always in the corner, never in center. And Pip is just, oh god, Dreamland's so big, and yet, 5%, like, you can still, he has so much space, and that's only, like, I'd say, like, 10% of the stage that Rick's really has access to. He's just so good at, and again, mm -hmm. wow. It's all over him, he's just not letting him breathe. Yeah, this, I think, is a, like, really stellar example of positional, uh, positional pressure translating so strongly to damage for Pip's quick. Ooh, but now Rick's finally been in center dash dancing, but or she gets 
pushed out of center again. And... And edge guard pip squeak. He's I, one thing I noticed though that despite pip squeak edge guard being really strong, he has been very willing to just give Rick's ledge and not mess mm -hmm. around with that. Because maybe he's kind of like for him seeing how good he does with like holding center that he's saying like if Fox gets the ledge, I can perfectly respect the range which I can't interact with. Then once we're supposed to play neutral again and you're in the corner, I'm still gonna beat you. Got him. A lot of up tilting for Pipsquick right now. Yeah. Very nice, very wow. nice. Taking the ledge. He must have noticed the pattern from Pipsquick with that. But it's still gonna be still gonna be tricky. He's gonna need it. He might this is more oh, almost. And slight delay on the shine soul might yeah. have caused the weak back air to nick the Oh yeah, god. Exactly. Wow, what an air dodge from Pipsquick and what a short oh my god. Yeah, Pipsqueak seems to be really winning in most most of the scramble situation, which is a big part of this matchup, really. Yeah, but what a shine from Rick's and it, wow, it gives him ledge. Interesting. Ah, oh, he misses the timing on the up smash. But I Rick's like doing a good Rick's, job. Yeah, I like that Rick's oh. went for the roll after getting hit on shield to just kind of try to maybe reclaim center, but Pip just beats him out in neutral and then kills him for it, so. Mm -hmm. I have to pick up a solid 2-0 lead. I wouldn't really know which stage Rick's supposed to go to. I would say maybe Battlefield and kind of just... God, I wouldn't even know. There is, I, I haven't really seen a factor in which Rick's is outclassing Pip right now, or at least can't yeah, keep up with it. Because... I don't think the stage... Yeah, the stage is probably not the, the main issue here. Yeah. It's mostly the fact that Pipsqueak is just far more lethal whenever he gets any kind of opening on the Ricks. He's winning all the... And he's also winning all the scramble situations. Yeah, like, like the punish game is stronger from Pipsqueak, but the neutral, in my opinion, is even stronger. Wow, what, a, what an up angle for it, and, and the scary thing when you're, when you're losing this, like, when you're losing hard is that you're getting less and less hits in, than your opponent. And... It gets to a point where the moment you get a hit, you don't necessarily exactly know what to do with it, because you're not, you're not as much in the flow of things. And I think that might be an issue in this set. Like Pipsqueak is just constantly in control, constantly getting the punishes, constantly just... He knows what to do, but when Riggs gets a hit, he's just... It's almost like he's surprised he's getting the hit. Yeah. Oh, wow, but Pip is... And it's only yeah, getting I mean, worse. Even, yeah, because right now, even like, you know, you see Rick's trying to set up all those baits with the drift, uh, the fade back nares, but the Pip Squeak is not having it. Mm -hmm. He seems to be very content with, you know, kind of letting Rick stumble over himself in neutral and then gets the whiff punish on an undershoot, which I think is even wild to think about because the whole point of the undershoot, right? Made out of whiff punish. But yeah, exactly, yeah. Honestly, I think in that spot, when you're in Rick's position, I would just start running at Pip. Because, you know, playing neutral or applying mix up somehow seems that you've kind of sent the wrong like amount of information. Or like, yeah. you're, you're trying to play a game that Pip is like so far and above beyond mm -hmm. looking at the scoreboard that I think you kind of should just dumb things down and then kind of work your way to like setting up a new neutral game, like, you know? Really mm -hmm. having those like strong approaches or like brutal, like honest approaches, just and then from there, it kind of start baiting. Whereas if you just start baiting with Pip's Week, never really having to be scared of you actually approaching them, what's the point of setting up the bait? And mm -hmm. yeah, Pip's Week, uh, yeah, strong, yeah, strong, strong. <laughs> Pip's Week, uh, Pip's Week basically better player, better player than him this stuff. And uh, yeah, that's got to be rough for Rix, but I mean, he still has the loser bracket to make a to make a deep run. Hopefully, there's a lot of hungry people out there in the losers bracket. So let's see if he will survive there. But uh, the winner of this plays the winner of. Do you know? So yeah, they will be playing the winner of Mint and Jarrite. Mint and Jarrite, and with, is that the next set that's coming up? I do believe so. Yes. Nice. Because, um, so the interesting thing about these two is I saw 
Polo Coliseum, which was a European summit style event, where mm -hmm. both of these played in pools or in bracket, one of the two, I'm not too sure, where 